I'm, I'm Chala, I'm a lecturer in urban planning in University of Manchester, and I do mainly mainstream spatial planning, infrastructure planning, urban governance, and more recently, last two or three years, healthy planning. And in terms of the project that got funded from the Carbon Aid, I looked into how we can use neighborhood plans to decarbonate, decarbonize local travel and transport in English countryside mainly, and specifically looking at Northwest England. Okay, and tell me a little bit about um, what you actually did during the, the research process. During the research process? Yeah. Um, most of which included the co-production of embedding good practices and principles of decarbonization of transport into Confort, which was my case study in north of Lancaster, into their emerging neighborhood plan. So most of the time what I did, part of my decarbonate project is to talk with them, to explain to them what's a neighborhood plan, what, what, what a neighborhood plan is, what it can do for local transport, how we can write appropriate policy wording in their neighborhood plans, and in the meantime, as I was doing this co-production with them, I was also doing research on the site to be able to write and produce the toolkit. Planning is not just about land use management, but it's more about creating healthier places and healthier planet. I wasn't think I was. I wasn't thinking, you know, along those lines when I was doing planning for the last seven, eight years. And the Carbonate project kind of exposed me and expanded my scope. So Comfort is a, is a quite interesting place. They have a very accessible train station. It's very well serviced. They are very close to a very one of the nicest parts of the country and they i think they've been also cursed by their location because lots of people using comfort to just pass through and go to other places rather than actually stopping there and then you know doing something and spending their money there so the main challenge for the comfort is to how they can turn this location to an advantage doing a bit of a place making a town center taking a greater control over the development pressure on their area. And there's going to be like a couple of hundred houses going to be developed in the near future. And they want to have a greater say in that. And generally take advantage of this, this process, which is enabled planning. And rather than sit by and, you know, being reactive to the process, they want to be proactive and get, get, you know, get some say in that. So, and when I, when I approached them about, you know, this idea about decarbonization of transport and embedding that into their local plan, presumably one of the first in the country, they were very, very receptive to that. They liked the idea. And when I did the survey, the community survey about what we can do, what we need to do, you know, et cetera, and they were very receptive as well. And they were very also honest when the challenges were. I mean, in terms of best practice, if you do a literature review, there's a lot of stuff about I know, pavement parking, how to turn town centers to make it, you know, soft measures to slow down traffic, traffic management, et cetera. And when I created some solutions and I approached them with those solutions, they gave me very good feedback in terms of what can and cannot work, which influenced the toolkit a lot. Would you say that the, it was easy to join up the, the decarbonization agenda with the, the neighborhood action plan in ways that, that actually will make a difference? Um, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that it can have huge impact because the policies that are emerging, currently the plan is in the examination stage. So hopefully what we'll have to see with is how to the extent the policy is going to be adopted. But in terms of community awareness, actual concrete planning policies, it can have very, very huge, you know, huge impact. And one of the key things that I wanted to do as part of this process also bring in the county and also local authority, because they have they have the power to actually implement policies 
that will have much greater impact. And to some extent, I was successful because I at least brought them to the table. I, when I've spoken to planning departments and local authorities for a variety of other, other projects, the main challenge has always been that lack of data, hyper-local data. And that's something that I wanted to do with the comfort. And they were very keen. And I was actually thinking about applying for funding from Foundation of Integrated Transport. Basically, we've got new policies emerging. Why we're not using that as an opportunity to set a baseline, put some sensors, you know, very out of places, and collecting data specifically for each of these policies. I also talked to people from the highways. Um, authority, Lancashire County, they were also very keen. So that was the plan, but I, then I got funding for the project. Now I don't have the time, so it's not going to happen. But when I spoke to people, that was the, that was the key thing. They okay. want to know where, how people commute. For example, we think about buying um, data from Google or TomTom, you know, the, the, the private companies in terms of trying to embed that into our design. And then it just, yeah, didn't happen because I don't have the time anymore. Yeah. Okay, no, that's really interesting to, to hear. There's an awful lot of data available, but um, as you say, it's often behind a paywall for, for someone like Google. Or that's the thing. Tom -tom yeah. And uh, the, 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 the neighbourhoods can't, can't afford to, to access it and would need the support to, uh, to process it all anyway. So... Um, yeah, it's an interesting... And then, and then one, one thing that we want to do is hyper-local data that actually tells you, you know, what's happening street by street, you know, house by house almost, basically tracking that, you know, the progress of the neighborhood planning policies against certain set of measures. I'm targeting local authorities first because they are the ones who are actually going to be helping these neighborhood forums producing those plans and planning consultancies. But again, local authorities will be directing planning consultancies, which documents they need to be referencing and etc. If they were to say that as part of our strategy, we're also promoting this supplementary planning guidance, which is this toolkit, then they they will they will reference it. And they will they will use it. <laughs> 